All right. Good evening. Welcome again to Card Authority Australia, episode 47. Right. Good oh, evening. my God. Welcome Janks. Does it every Janks. time. Janks. Janks. Every time. Oh, my goodness. He does it every time. Here we are. Episode 47, Card Authority Australia. How are we all? It's been a big week post-gem release. As always... AJ2, Jenks, how are you? I feel like you start every episode the same way with some sort of technical error on the audio. Yeah. And it just proves that we are live. There is no pre-recording no. pretending to be live or anything like that going on. Do you remember that one time we didn't check sound? And there was no, there sound? Was no sound? Literally yes. one time yes. we didn't do it. Your camera's a bit... Whoa, whoa. both our cameras whoa. are a bit... Whoa. whoa, what's going on here? No. no. That's better. It's back to normal. Back to normal. <laughs> All right. Big week of Gem. Obviously, if you've been living under a rock or not involved in the AFL card trading industry or you've just been Matilda's obsessed, you may have missed the latest release of 2023 Select AFL Gem Football. Indeed. A nine card box that was sold a few weeks ago and was delivered last Tuesday. Wednesday? I've lost track of it. I know it was supposed to be delivered like weeks ago. But we got it last week. We got it. We finally um, got it. So it's been an exciting time, obviously, across the numerous break ventures and business ventures we have here at RGV. We've obviously been opening lots of boxes. All the big groups, Facebook, people are posting what they've been getting, break mail, all sorts of things. It's always an exciting time during release. Yep. Jenks, before we deep dive into a few things... Uh, hello, Burn. When's the next release coming out, Jenks? We'll Good talk- Mr. Cranston. We'll, we'll talk about that soon. Yes, hello, Justin. Um, how, how have you seen the first week? What have been your very early takes on Gem? Um, so, sort of everything as expected with the new release. Yep. Um, trends, I think, in terms of like the new release and how things sort of roll out once a product starts to come to market, once people start receiving it. Um, you know, we need to be mindful that this a direct to consumer, direct to collector product, so yep. it's not being opening or sold to a store capacity, um, and there, therefore there's no one in a retail from a retail sense holding large volume of singles or anything like that. Correct. So the way things happen with the release like this is very much dependent on the people who are opening it mm-hmm. and what they then do with those cards. Obviously, significant amount of of content and action and interaction is taking place on Facebook. Um, and we're seeing a bit on eBay, but probably nowhere near what I'm used to in terms of, you know, like one of my generic search strings will be the release name, St. Kilda. So yep. in regards to this release, like, so one of my search string is select gem St. Kilda, and the results are really low compared to other releases. There's just not much around, and that's probably just reflective of the way a product like this rolls out. And I do want to get into it probably a bit later in the conversation about you know, how much has been opening, opened, how it's actually getting to market. So, so just, um, in terms of me as a collector... Hang on a second, just yeah. to give... You made a good point there. Yeah. And something to give a little bit of context to people that are perhaps newer into the card industry. So there's what's known as mainstream releases such as footy stars that get mass distributed. They call them mass products. Yeah. And you'll find that at 7-Eleven service stations, things like that, all your hobby stores. Yeah. You then have hobby releases yeah. such as Series 2, yeah. which get distributed not at 7-Eleven but hobby stores get them and then sell at retail and then you have premium products or special releases such as Gem, Supremacy, Brilliance which are only sold direct to consumer straight from select and that's mainly SEC or or general sale. Yeah, so they're normally smaller runs but as a result of that the way things work with the cards coming to market are different. You know, obviously, like through RGV, we're a power seller on eBay of cards, along yep. with a number of other big resellers and stores who, for hobby releases like Series 2 products, your dominances and optimums and legacy, whatever, yep. we would normally open a significant volume. So you see, you would normally see a number of people who have large volume of eBay listings and, and a lot of online, a lot of stock availability, whereas this release, it's very spread out. It's not like there's individuals that have 50 or 100 cards for sale. Correct. For the most part, you're seeing people with a maximum of, you know, 15 to 20 cards actually for sale unless they're coming back through from breaks, which you're starting to see that tri- trickle effect. Well, I think moment. we've we've opened maybe six boxes 
collectively us, the yeah, store, in-house, and that yeah. includes our personals. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're obviously buying cards as people come in and things like that. But you know, whereas perhaps a series two product, we might open five cases. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a huge well, difference least, in scale. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Um, so. I suppose going back to the question you asked me, which was like, how do I feel about the release so far? From a collector's standpoint, I've loved it. It's not a huge chase, yep. but some amazing cards to chase down, or in my opinion, some really fantastic cards. And 17 it, cards and yeah, so 17 cards for each team. Like, we're a week in now to release, or a bit more than a week in, a week and a half after release day, let's call it. Yep. Batch day. And... Um, as I just said to you, I was literally going through my cards just before the break started. I literally was going through my cards here and I confirmed to AJ that I've actually completed one full master set, which is good, but I need more and I need certain types of sets, as you know, and as most people know. So yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't forget, folks, I'm still in the market for cards. <laughs> but the fact that within a week and a half and I've been flat chat, as you know, between being here and dealing with other stuff at home and, and whatnot as well and breathing in two days of paint fumes and all that sort of stuff. Yep. I, I'm surprised that half my mail or probably two thirds of my mail hasn't even turned up and I have a full completed set here yep. already. And again, I think only one or two of those cards has come from what we opened ourselves. So I think it's a really attainable product. Sure. The set is super attainable for each team or whatever you're trying to collect. I think people are probably getting it done in a pretty fast amount of time. As Although there's been shitloads of sales and trade threads, there's also been shitloads of actual transactions going through. Absolutely. And I think right now, or for the last couple of days, there's been some amazing buying opportunities to get sets completed at pretty bloody good prices. And then you think about what the card is, how hard they are to get, not just based on numbering, but the short print of the entire run and all that sort of stuff, maybe probably underestimating, like people are probably underestimating how good a deals they're getting at the moment on a lot of cards. Like picking up those rubies to 40 for three or $400 for medium to top teams is an absolute bargain. So a couple of questions I've seen that tie into a little bit of what you just said. Um, you know, how much product do you think is opened? You know, we talk about this at the start of every release. I've got a rough number in my head. And, and I feel like my number is going to be so far away from your number. Well, if yours is either zero or 100%, then yes. Yeah, no, I, I think that, I, I don't know, I'm really interested to see what you say. No, like, honest, to... honestly, guys, there's certainly, there's a lot of things that we discuss before shows and, and whatnot and during the week. We didn't so, say our numbers. So we know what our answers are effectively going to be for each other. We can try and, we can try frame it however the you want but, TV, yeah. but this particular thing here we both agreed before to not say what our numbers were so it would be completely unique i reckon aj thought i was going to be on the same number to him i think i know roughly what he's going to say and my number is going to be very different okay, and what's your number and then what do you think i'm going to say uh, i'm going to say what i think you're going to say and then i'll tell you my number after okay. you confirm okay i think you're going to say somewhere around 65 percent. okay and what do you think your number is my number, and I think you're gonna you're gonna think I'm crazy. I I, I reckon at maximum maximum thirty five to forty percent. So you're wrong. I think it's something around fifty to fifty five. Okay. Um, only because I have a fairly good awareness of obviously what stock we've. It's no secret we've been buying up stock. Yeah. We have a little bit put away. There's lots of boxes for sale. There's yeah. lots of boxes in transit. I don't think it's much above 50 or 55%. Yeah, see, and it, whereas I, I think it's even lower for those for those reasons exactly. And I also think there's a lot of people just holding on to boxes. Yeah. Um, and and um, my measurements I'm trying to take, and although we haven't had a huge amount of time to pin down, you know, massive amounts of data, we have worked through some of it. And I'm, I'm not seeing a lot. Like, as I said... We're seeing more people than ever before buying and selling cards. So there's more people engaged than there's ever been before, but the volume of their listings in terms of how many cards they have is way down. You're not seeing sales threads of 50 or 60 cards. You're seeing no, a, no. a photo of someone's 
handful spread, either one box or some break cards. Well, pretty much everyone has two boxes unless they've maybe yeah. got so, a couple so, of mystery accounts. So to me, I, when I look at it from that perspective, I feel like it's just such a small amount has been open still. You might be right. All right, a couple uh, I'd of be questions. To see what people think. Andrew Tuck Warrell, in the comments, like what you guys think. I'd yeah, like Andrew Warrell. I like that there are parallels in this release, and that goes back to it. Seventeen cards per set. Um, no the parallels. fact that there are no parallels, it makes it a unique chase. Glenn McEnany, has there been a cap set on SEC members? Um, yes, it's the a ca thousand. The cap's a thousand, but we believe they're slightly They cancel less, membership, right? so they, cancel, yes. they cancel something, yeah. Uh, hello, Andrew. Bought two boxes, sold one to a breaker, made two sales, and the rest trades. Completed my set for a profit of $189. Unreal. Well done, Liam. Burn thinks the other 50% of the stock is under the desk. Look, it's very possible. It's, it's, it's probably more like, I don't know, a couple of percent as opposed to 50% yeah. Burn. Look, we've got a couple hundred boxes, but we've been buying up. Is Select a private or public company? Well, it's private. It's owned by Jenks, as everyone. It's not actually owned by me, contrary to what some people think and what AJ keeps saying, but it is a private company. Yep. It's mid been around since 93. Lee Brown, mid 40%. Not many Hawks, O1s or jumper numbers have appeared yet. And that's actually, I, I scrolled past it a little bit before, that we still haven't seen a lot of the big jumper number cards and the rubies. And look, we're going to talk about rubies a little bit later, but yeah. maybe it's a good time to talk about it now. They seem like they are the card... Is that the 08? No, it's not the 09 either. It's, it's not the 09. It's one of my other ones. Yeah. Um, we yeah, we certainly, there's been a lot of, put it down, you pelican. Um, we've certainly noticed that the, the amount of reds being shown, we seem to be seeing a lot of signatures. Reds are either getting snaffled away into people's collections. Yeah. Or they're just not coming out. And we certainly know on a break side of things, we've probably broken, what, 150 boxes on stream. And reds are the thing you see the least of. We've seen less reds than SIGs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We've done more SIGs than reds, yeah. for sure. Yeah, look, and, and that's the thing. I think it's really funny, like, there's so much emotion involved in cards, and we always talk about, you know, that, that, that the term of the year so far is recency bias, right? Friend Thomas, Thomas Butters, Butters recency wrote a good article about recency bias. bias. He did write a, a good article, shout out to Butters. Yep. Um, and I think emotion coupled with that recency bias is we're seeing dramatic influence take place, especially at the starts of release. So people go hammer and tong about something or get really upset about something and they push it and they push it and they push it. And as a result, you start to see movements and action within the market that, may, that, that might be a little bit misplaced. And when that's going on, people stop and don't think about the fundamental things that underpin trading cards um, and you know the and, and the movement of cards and you know collectors is obviously one of those things and, and you know the numbering of cards and the print runs and how hard they are to hit and sometimes a reflection of a card's numbering isn't necessarily a reflection of how, how hard it is to hit based on the distribution model itself so I think there's some really interesting things at play in this release, and I think there are some cards here. I think there are a lot of cards that long-term are gonna have really significant, not just value, but overall interest stacked up against other cards, you know what I mean? Well, let's look for example, remember we talked about when Brilliance came out last year, gold headliners, oh not gold headliners, gold Brilliance, yeah. felt like they were everywhere. Yeah. How many, you can't. No, how, how many do you see now? Ironically, and not for card authority, I did look at this the other day. I was having a conversation with someone, and I used that as an exact example, mm -hmm. and went on eBay, and there was a total of nine golds listed, but only represented four different teams, and there was like two Adelaide, two Port Adelaide, I think, as well. So exactly right. They're so rare, and they're impossible to find now, but that's one of the constant cards people are always looking for. Like, you know... It's no secret I have like, you know, quite a few <laughs> Lenny Hayes, like a lot. I think I've got like nine or 10 of those Lenny Hayes. Yep. And that's one, the Lenny Hayes Gold is one of the cards that I get hit up a lot privately for people looking for them and it's not necessarily St. Kilda people. Yep. It's set collectors. So I think cards that are superior quality or... Short the, print. Short print, the right player, like a number of those different aspects you know, in hindsight, become very big cards. And sure. I know, like, a lot of people have 
taken cracks at, at you know the gem aspect of this and what does it mean and i can absolutely appreciate that opinion of i like the idea that for instance in supremacy subsets had reasoning momentous moments goal sure. picking grades all those sorts of things and yes there doesn't seem to be any sort of reasoning behind the gem aspect we all know it's very much a knockoff of flawless fantastic cool it's unique it's unique but the reality is like and again, I'm holding one in my hand. 180 point, really good player representation. First release of the time. First, first, of it, of first it. release of its time. Yep. Uh, uh, first of its kind release. Who knows if there'll ever even be another one of these releases. I've put some of these on my shelves in my card room where I have every type of high end St. Kilda card on display and they stand out a lot and they stand out to the same level as Brilliance, to be honest. And because historically cards have always been 35 to 55 point with a couple of random ones in between it's they just stand out a lot and i think there's a certain things are being undervalued although the cards the cards are at the price ranges we pr predicted and forecasted they would be at where they should be at now they're at the right prices for right now but i think the future upside is like massive how does a jack you know in, in real terms jack steel ruby numbered to 40 all those things we just talked about the fact that it's in 100 you know the thickness of the card the rarity of a release the high end of the product these cards are selling for less than the jack steel marquee albeit it was a case here and it was but but it, it's just like what do you want more like as a collector if you could only have one or the other wow. are you picking the 180 point card yeah. from a specialized set or are you picking the case here from a you know, five pointer like the, at the very least they should be equal i would think definitely not at, less yeah definitely not less so with that said i think there's some some really good opportunities and, and yeah. we'll get on to some pricing in a second yeah. just a couple of questions that have come through do you guys think that older cards over the past two years rather than the brand new releases still hold value absolutely luke and pretty much that ties into what adam's just been and saying it depends what it is if you're talking about prestige no it hasn't like it's pretty clear the ass fell out of that, you yep. know? And will stuff bounce back? Eventually one day it will bounce back, but yep. you know, probably not anytime Again, soon. Again, short, short print cards of good players and good teams as they get locked away into master sets, PCs, things like that. If you try to backfill them two, three years later, yeah, you're gonna have trouble. Yeah. And you've got to consider as a collector, if you if push came to shove and you had to sell parts of your collection, what are the parts you would sell first and are the ones you would keep you you would keep till the end yep and that basically answers the question on desirability and where the value will be in terms of future upside yep um a question here from grant hartwright why is it and why should it be so difficult to contact select sure there should be an avenue to contact them other than a name slash faceless email well look obviously grant we have nothing to do with select um but they have a ticket lodging system you lodge a ticket and they reply back to you I think people probably underestimate the volume of contacts that Select get. Um, you know, scale you, of company versus volume of inquiries, and and no, the size no. of the company. Yeah, Select is not, not a big, big business. business. Yeah. It's you know half a dozen or a dozen employees. They're a small business. Look, every business can always do better at customer service. But yeah. honestly, if you've got issues with Select, I will post it up. But call Adam Janky directly. <laughs> yeah. um, he likes video I was calls. Where you were going. He likes to... video calls. I didn't know where you were going. Yeah. I thought you were going to throw it. All, all times of the night, give him a call. But seriously, Grant, just lodge a ticket. That's the best way to do it. Uh, Brent Allen, any legs to this Brownlow signature rumor? We actually talked about this just before. We did. Um, look, we don't know anything about it. Um, we don't know anything officially about it. Yeah, Shane Penrose. We can see all this same un unofficial what? content as everyone else. I was going to say, what do you unofficially yeah. know? Well, the same thing you're about to say. We've oh, seen okay. Shane, obviously, who is a long-term member of the car collecting community and is involved in various industry things as well. Yep. And other people have said it too. And to be honest, the rumours aren't a few days old. These rumours have been going around for months already. Yep. We've been hearing rumours for months of people saying... It's not the first time. ...that there's a, a, a special release coming up that includes Brownlow winners of some sort. Yeah. Um, people have thrown around 150-year anniversary of the Brownlow medal, all that sort of stuff. If there's credible conversation taking place, it's fair to assume something's coming 
it was discounted already that there was another another publisher that was doing it. Uh, yeah, there's some talk that might be that South Australian card company. But, yeah, that's what that's right. Uh, they said no. They said so. they're not. So watch this space. Yeah, get we, excited. We Is it something don't. for Legacy? Could be, but um, I, I don't know. Again, the information I think was Shane said it's something else. So. Has the Nick Dacos jumper number been hit yet? No. Um, have you got it? If you've got it, as you might have been again stuck under a rock, Adam stitched me up and has committed us to a ten thousand dollar bounty yeah. for that Funnily card. Funny enough, I did say to AJ, I said, I wonder if tonight's the night where someone pops up mm. in the card authority commentary, who's got the number ten, and then makes us do like a live transfer to their bank account, Fine. live on air during card authority. So you can come around to the it, office tonight. We fine. are waiting to see it. We did have one person contact us claiming to have it. We asked for a photo. They did not reply. We asked for a photo again. They did not reply. We asked for a photo a third time. And they didn't even look at the message. So you know, I'd class that as a bullshit. Yeah. Um, how many master set collectors from Robbie are you aware that's still active? Um, More how, than you realize, I reckon. Yeah. How's the number fallen in the past two or three years? It's definitely shifted, but there are more collectors collecting more things. Um, there are definitely some master set collectors that perhaps... We're getting stock some of the non-traditional methods that now with Wang not being the distributor anymore, probably are finding that a little bit harder. But yeah. I imagine they're still must. Methodology so behind being able to yeah. collect has certainly changed and what to collect. And I think, Robbie, that's what your question is sort of alluding to is, has there been a drop off in full scale master set collectors in the last two years? Yes, there have, but I think there's been a comeback has taken place this year as well. So I think what we saw is 2021, as the value of cards were go was going up dramatically, also the volume of cards and the volume of collectors, the amount of releases were going up dramatically as well. Yep. A lot of, or not a lot of, some master set collectors, even some team set collectors got deterred. They were concerned that it was becoming too difficult. It would be too hard and too expensive to do it but what's really been really interesting is as much as none of us probably like that there's only been a couple of releases so far this year and they've been we're already you know well over the halfway point of the year and we're only just seeing the second release for the year i think what it did do or what it definitely did gave do, us time was, yeah, it gave people time and yep. that's every person in all different ways and it gave a lot of those set collectors an opportunity to actually pick the footy back up let's call it yep and, you know, went back and, and started going again. So I'm aware of a bunch of people that, or a handful of people that stopped in 2021 that are well and truly either now caught up or are in the process of catching up. Yeah. And even to the extent a couple have sort of been a bit like, I got sucked in a bit to a short-sightedness and all the rhetoric and co conversation around it. And then I realized that, it wasn't all that bad. Just needed to be really smart with it. Yeah. You know, and that's... Mar marathon, not a spree. Yeah, and, you know, understanding selling waves and what happens now and how, you know, payment methods come into how people buy and sell their cards and at what point in time they do that and all those sorts of things. And I think we've seen that with this release a lot magnified because of the delay. Yeah, well. so... Glenn is now asking, if you're offering 10K for the jumper number, what do you see the value of the card? Now, I will put that on you in two seconds, but just to explain some context, we are purchasing the card not to go and lock it away, all right? We want to put it in one of our repacks. That's we correct. do repacks, um, and we want it to headline a repack in the future. So the card will go back into the community. Do we think the card is actually worth $10,000? Probably not at this second. I don't think. There's, there's what do you yeah. think it's worth now? I don't think there's a buyer at 10,000. I think we've seen, what's it been? Actual sales at about two and a half, 2.8. Something like that. Of regular number cards. That we know of, yep. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think right now, it wouldn't be hard to sell, the, to find buyers at six, 6.5. Yep. Maybe even seven. Yep. I don't think there's anyone except us paying 10 for it now or someone that wants to be spiteful and block us from getting it. Go for it. There's, multi some money, please. there's multiple Collingwood collectors who I was very forthcoming in having a conversation with after we announced the bounty. There's always going to be people that are excited and there's going to be people that are frustrated and upset. Yep. And that's 
completely right. 100%. Yep. Collingwood people should have at face value been pissed off with us collectors. This is rubbish. They're driving up the price of the card. They're trying to get the card. I don't want to compete with them. Totally understand that. When the dust settled, though, and I went to a few of those pies collectors and I said, okay, so if you were in a break or you had a box and you hit that card <laughs> and we have 10K on the table, what are you doing? Not one of them has yet said to me they would keep the card. Yep. Every single one of them. With that being said, there's only four four people I've asked, all Collingwood collectors. They have all said <laughs> They'll take the money. they'd be coming straight for the yep. bounty. They'd come straight for the bounty. So to me, that indicates that the price of the bounty is right. It's above market value. Yep. We intended that because we have a purpose for that card. As AJ said, if we end up with that card, which hopefully we do, mm, a few people saying they'd keep it, they'd keep it. Really, there you so go. So just, just not. Well, if one of you hits it, yeah. we're going to make you put. Ger- we're all Ger- hold Jared it. Smith, Mitch Quinn, Sam Ma. If they happen to come off stream and ask for the money, we'll just scrub them off the list. Yeah, that's right. right. No soup for you. Um, Jared Smith made a good comment here, and I don't necessarily agree with you, Jared. It just sucks that we can't get much trading done anymore. I feel like I have to sell what I have to fund, or fund, I'm guessing, other cards. Jared, I think, unfortunately, you have fallen into a trap of what Richmond would be like, being that you're Collingwood. I would actually say trading is at an all-time high. Unfortunately, people don't want to trade for Collingwood and Richmond. That is the reality of it. People want to get uh, the max run. Richmond's more accessible now, but... No one wants to trade. Again, again, like... Guys, like, let's be honest, okay? This is like... Oh, Andrew Worrell, add him to the list. He yeah, doesn't want the money. This is, yeah. like, this is just how it works, okay? Can I, you know, we, we are very experienced in the selling of card side of things and especially on the break side of things. The previous, up until the last three or four months, in every, and every product outside of Optimum, so even including Supremacy 2021, for the last two years... In Pick Your Team Breaks, one of the hardest, if not the hardest team to sell in every break of Supremacy, Prestige, every uh, uh, Brilliance, every product basically, Collingwood's been the most difficult to sell. Yep. In 2019, Collingwood was the top team taken in every break, every draft break, everything. Everyone wanted Collingwood and Richmond was after Collingwood. All of a sudden, Collingwood stopped performing. Tigers are getting exciting. The Dusty Train, all this sort of the shit. The Dynasty. Yeah, the Dynasty. Everyone just wants fucking Richmond in a break. Everyone wants Richmond, 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 Richmond. The Collingwood person gets Richmond in a break. They don't even accept a trade for Collingwood. They want Richmond because yep. they're trying to hit the Dusty cards. The reality is the exact same is taking place now with Collingwood. You've got the guy who's the hottest guy since the previous guy. Yep. You've got... A team that up until the last week was probably Brown, uh, not Brown, it was Premiership favourites. I don't know if they still are, mm. but a team that's massively performing in the last twelve months. So also a, biggest club in the land, biggest club, biggest strongest supporter base. Yeah, yeah, bigger biggest supporter base, which generally leads to biggest collector base. Yep. There's n- nothing different is happening to you guys right now than what's happened to other clubs previously, and. For those of you who, who are in the community and have been here for at least two or three years, you literally watched this happen with Richmond for the last three years. Yep. Up until this year's releases, everyone, if you had a dra- if you're in a draft break, you're taking Tigers. If you want cards to come out of a box that's not necessarily a PC, you want it to be Tigers because you can get the best trade value, the best sale value. Yep. It's now happening to Collingwood. Thank God it hasn't happened to St Kilda. Well, and we don't have a big enough membership base. So good. Our, our boy Gormy just commented, at least we know St Kilda will always be able to be yeah, traded. Yeah, that's right. That's but, true. Yeah. Um, so look, keep coming with the questions. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, I'm not putting them on the screen because um, Butters didn't show me today. Yeah, sorry. Luke just said, I'm glad the Bombers tax is over. That'll Even c- Bombers. Remember Optimum, the last two years of Optimum, yeah. when everyone was super excited. That was the, the first year, the five the DPSs. Year, yeah, the DPSs, the SN1s yeah. were the most expensive DPSs yeah. in the whole release for the whole start of the release because everyone was thinking that the Essen and Dynasty was on. Yeah. But they don't know. Yeah, they still... St. Kilda, the Mitch Owens Dynasty is here. God, stop him. Um... So, let's get back to Jam a little bit. We're straightening up here a little bit, but keep your questions coming through. I will scroll back. Um, a lot of people, and again, um, 
a few people that have been around for multiple years here in the trading community, you'll notice that there is a very, very consistent and history repeats with the cycle of pricing of cards. Cards come out very hot, they then drop, and then they come back up as they dry up. We've talked at end about this cycle a yep. lot, and everyone is saying that the prices for gem are crashing and there's no value in it anymore. We have obviously done a lot of data on this, and we do this before we get the product in hand. And long-time listeners and viewers of the show know we've always harped on about it. As soon as a checklist comes out, yep. we get to work on putting our spreadsheets together of our forecast pricing yep. of everything from individual cards, then lay it into teams, collation-based, all sorts of stuff. And I guess the exciting thing for everyone is where we predicted the cards to be after 10 days or two weeks, the prices have not got to those levels yet. Some are hovering at the They're levels. They're getting close. But and can... some are a little bit above. Yeah. Keep so, in mind, these are not long-term prices. It's what we expect short and medium term yep. for them to be, exactly that couple of weeks after Yeah, so release. 10 days to two weeks we sort yeah. of aim for. Um, the cards are actually performing really well. Really And well. some are really yeah. overperforming. Um, we were talking a little bit off air before this that it seems that the emeralds are performing really well. They're a good looking card, the green pops, the prices are holding nicely for them. There's always a card in every release. And in series two, it's generally the number to 80 box hits that are just priced poorly. They don't hold their value when really they should be worth a lot more. Unfortunately in this set, it looks like it's the blue sapphires. Yeah, great, huh? They're the ones that have probably dropped so substantially and now are very very cheap in some cases you there is base that is going for more than some of these blue sapphires yeah, yeah. um they will dry up they you know number it, it, it ultimately everything will when the number highest, to 70 yeah. they're going to dry up the highest cards in the set are number yeah. to 90 so everything will eventually dry up yeah. so definitely if you're looking to buy cards for your collection um now is going to be a good time over the next week or so. It's probably going to hit the numbers that we think it will. If you're looking to sell, if you don't need to sell, don't fire sale and fall into the pressure because there are going to be um, some cards that people wish they didn't fire sell last week is probably the nicest way to say it. Absolutely. Yeah. And look, I think, you know, people, you don't need to hear it from us. You can see what's going on. If you're seeing a lot of buying activity and someone posting up sales threads on Facebook and cards getting snapped off really quickly, or if you look at your eBay watch list and then look at the ended items and it looks like the amount of ended items is starting to go up dramatically, well, it's an indicator that the price is right. Correct. And that's when you've got people moving. So, you know, again, like you can use me as an example if you want as a barometer, like as, as much as it may trouble some people, like I'm a legit collector. I, I'm a, I consider myself to be a pretty serious collector. I collect a lot of cards and I tend to outlay a lot of money on them, but I outlay what I think is market value. And I don't know who's been watching what I've been doing and watching my movements, but seven days ago when we were in the first couple of days of release, you didn't really see me anywhere buying anything because I wasn't in fact buying anything that early on. I was waiting for cards to reach my target pricing ranges to then start to buy. You've probably noticed in the last 72 hours, I'm all over sales threads at the moment, buying up and repetitively buying, and some of you may notice, certain cards and buying multiples of them. Because again, when the price is right, I'm absolutely a buyer in the market. But at the same time, I'm happy to roll with that slow and steady wins the race to complete an overall set. But it's not gonna stop me when the price is right, and it's not gonna stop me doing multiples of cards I collect as well. So I know for me, I'm going through that at the moment. I think on most stuff, the price is right at the moment or it's getting yep. to be right. So I'm a buyer right now and I, I think I'm probably representative of a bunch of other people too. And it feels like the sales threads where the cards are cheap or right, they're all getting snapped off quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. The things that are selling are either priced too cheap or they're All right. right. Yeah, yep. exactly right. Yep. And I mean, I've started, I was the same too. I, you know, you know, I bought two cards in the first three days, yeah. something that I wanted, but I've started now pulling the trigger on things as well yeah. because they're hitting the pricing ranges yeah. that I want to purchase. Yeah. And something for people to remember, because again, because this product is a direct to consumer product and there's no power sellers involved, it means everyone 
is is out there to sell or trade individual cards to then go and purchase or, or get the cards they want for their set. And something just to remind everyone, the eBay audience is very different to the Facebook audience. The people on Facebook, you can generally find them on eBay, yep. but the huge audience on eBay, you don't find them on Facebook. And we know from the people who come along and buy our cards who we can't identify them via social media, they don't sit amongst our networks or anything like that, you know. We've got a couple of thousand people just in AFL on our pages on Facebook, and that's such a small proportion of the amount of people buying and selling cards on we eBay. We talk about the Facebook bubble all the time. Yeah, it's su- it's, yeah. it's it's such a bubble. So there's no harm, even if you're used to selling on Facebook and you feel more comfortable selling on Facebook, well, there's no harm in, in having a shot out at eBay as well. And generally, you know, the general rule of thumb is the money you get via eBay sales is going to be 20% or 10 to 20% higher than what you'll see those prices go on Correct. Facebook for as well. So question here from Jared. Uh, will grading be a big factor in gems possibly? Would they grade the actual gem in regards to the rumors being about the different mold or the gem value itself? Uh, look, Jared, as we've spoken for a lot over the years, Grading in AFL cards is something that is slowly starting to creep in. It's something that we're excited about, but fundamentally we just haven't seen the additional value added for grading. But there is one thing to remember. 130 point, 180 point cards, thicker cards do not grade well. And that's across the board. Yeah, they don't grade consistently well yeah, like other so cards. I don't think it's so much will gem or grading of the gems. I don't think the gem grading as such would have any factor. But just be very conscious about sending off thicker stocked cards. They don't grade well because they're generally hand-packed. They're not coming off a normal production line. There is imperfections to them in all different ways. So, yeah, I... um. Grading, we are excited about. We hope that it's going to be something big in the future. But AFL cards in particular are so yeah. unique with their numbering opposed to the US cards. It just hasn't um, it's just gained all, traction also yet. Also, the, the volume of cards and volume so small. of people involved is yep. nothing about the international cards. And again, we are, we're supporters. Like There seems to be a misconception out there that we don't like the idea of grading. We've we have probably great. graded as many and spent as much money with PSA on grading AFL cards as anyone else has. We've graded two, three hundred cards. Uh, yeah, and yep. we did, you know, we, we started doing it two years ago. Yeah. even more, two and a half years ago is when we started grading AFL cards. We are also a seller or an attempted seller of those cards. And unfortunately, as you just said, as AJ said, there is no increased value at the moment on most, not all necessarily, but most, I would say 99 of AFL cards that are graded and it could be by Australian grading companies or the internationals don't seem to have any increased value over the raw card and that's not saying that there hasn't been to the contrary but but, but on 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 a general scale there isn't a huge bump like there is with international that's right and they're they're just it will come one day of course it's going to have to be a factor one day and again we'll be absolutely trying to ride that that as it comes through as well yep but as of right now, you've got to ask yourself the question as a collector. You know, there's I think about 80 odd people on stream at the moment. Lots of people commenting. Lots of people we know, some that we don't. As collectors, if you're looking on eBay, if you were just scrolling for a particular type of card and all the real versions came up and the graded version came up, I think even at the same price, if they're exact same price, most people are buying the raw ver- the, just the regular card. They don't want the graded version. Yep. And again, it depends what you do with your cards. For me, I display a lot of my cards these days. I have a specified shelf just for graded and slab stuff because if I started throwing a random graded card in the mix with everything else, it's going to just, I don't know, it's not cohesive anymore. It uh, throws it all out of whack for me, but yes. And, and look, we have a, a slabbing business. So yeah, slabs, the, slabs cards in the same slabs as PSA slabs yeah. for the presentation purposes. But again, we don't believe that it's adding... We don't think it adds value to the cards. It, it, it's a protection and an aesthetic thing. Yeah. It's something of their own choice. Yeah. The value it might have is the cost of the protective. Yep. Aside from that, though, it's, we don't see the slabbing of cards increasing the value of cards. And as of right now, the grading of cards doesn't seem to be doing it. 
but it will do it in the future. Yep. Is my opinion. I'm, I'm strong of that belief. I know. I, I the agree. Right, the right cards. Steve yeah. Massey, uh, I heard selects redemption, hole punch, damage, some select redemption cards. Uh, news to me. We, we haven't redeemed any signatures yeah. yet. Have I you mean, heard anything? I, I know. Are signatures even redeemable yet? Yeah? yeah, there's a couple that are ready to go. Uh, We'd love to see photos. If anyone has received anything back from Select, make sure you drop a photo in the mix. Yeah, or and send it, send it through, Steve, anonymous. if you know yeah, something that we shoot, don't know. Shoot us a message. We're definitely keen to report on that. Andrew Kensington, are jumper numbers, are jumper numbers AFL one of ones? Well, in theory, every number could be viewed as a one of one if That's you're, you're looking at a particular too. number. Um, a one of one is one card that is exactly just one of them. That think, no one else can have that type of card. Yeah, I don't know if I'd count numbers. I think the to me the closest thing to a one of one is the O one supremacy booklets because they've got the AFL patch. Yeah, but at the the same argument can be had that there's no two booklets or no two patch cards that will ever have the exact same patch on it. That's true. So in theory, are they just twenty five of those cards or are they all one of ones? Um, I'm with you. A one of one to me, a true one of one card has to be a different to the other and that there's only one produced of that type of card um in a set and again like for afl cards i'm a big advocate of that not happening i am Um, and i know other people think it should happen and it will happen and it needs to happen selective openly openly said over the years it's not their intention it's not their intention but they could change that well, are you going to change? No, but everything's evolving so quickly, it could change. Liam saying, my bring concern, on the one-on-one. But that's the thing. See, my concern with it is, and my view is probably in this part of the world, more traditionalist as opposed to being more progressive in other parts of cards. Um, yeah, I think it's a problem. And we just talked about master set collectors and even team set collectors. But the reality is, as soon as you bring in one-of-ones, yeah. you take away the ability for people to get at least one of every type of card yep. and that's what then alienates those collectors um, from from a uh, a commercial standpoint or a, 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 a I don't know what the word are, a financial standpoint uh, whatever, whatever the word I'm looking for it's not rolling off my tongue wow it, that is rare do they get replaced does if you if you do one of ones you alienate all the collectors that are set collectors of some sort. Could it be player collectors, master collectors, any type of collector? You alienate them. Is there enough other people already there or the influx that comes in to replace them all? Commerce was the word I was talking about. So I've about. always had this same, and I think I've said this to you before. I would love to pull a dusty one of one in a box. I don't want to ever have to buy a dusty one of one. But the whole thing is, if you if there's a if you're you're a dusty collector, mm-hmm. if a one of one is in a product and you see someone else gets that card in their collection, they're about to get a big payday. No, but no, say it's going <laughs> to their collection. It's not for you. You can't have Everything it. Everything has a price. No, you can't have it. All right, what, kind of, yeah. what happens to your collection moving forward? Are you then a bit blasé and you're like, you know what? Well, footy stars next year. I don't care about the dusty cards because I can't have one of dusty ever made. Because there was a one of one, that's true. So the chances of being a total collector, an all-time set collector, is out the window. Do you then just stop collecting those cards? Of course, and that's why, and that's what's, fundamentally why I don't like and them. And then there's a huge detrimental impact on the hobby. Agree. So AFL cards are unique; they are different to most, if not all, other categories of sports cards. And fundamentally, I stand by this, and I'm sure I said it in episode one or two. Set collectors and collectors underpin AFL cards. Correct. And as soon as you alienate those people and go too far to an extreme that it reaches a point of critical mass, that's when you lose the collectors and the whole world starts to crumble. Now, do things need to be innovative and change need to be constant? Absolutely. Along the way, does that alienate some collectors and some types of collectors? Sure it does. They're going to be a bit. There's going to be a bit of collateral damage on the way. Yep. But you almost need that for sustainability to continue. Well, I would argue they've done that. You know, previous supremacy in nineteen introduced number to twenty five cards. I know there were some sigs before in Future Force, but now having a number to twenty five card in a release yeah. is more common. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas that wasn't the case a few years ago. Yeah. So I think they have evolved with shorter print cards, yeah. but with 25 of a, a, a card, it's so difficult. you've like, got a chance to get thing, it. Like, I think I need like 13 or 14 cards from my total all-time St. Kilda Select Master set. So 93 until now, at least one of every card. 
four or five of those are still those 1996. Oh, um, yeah, the, the Brownlow competition cards, which were printed to 20 only. Yeah. There's only 20 each of them, and you just don't see them. I know that one day, because there's 20 of each of them, one day they'll come up. They haven't come up in five years. Maybe they'll come up in the next 10 years. But the opportunity to get one should arise at some point. Sure. Whereas if they they were numbered to five or if it was a one of one or something like that, the prospect of the, the chase just doesn't even exist. And if the, you can't envisage yourself being able to get it, well, the dream is over. Yeah, and Burn must have made a comment there. I'm sure there are more than 35 Collingwood set clubbers that w- won't get a Dacos Sig. And that's right, Burn, there is. But they are at least available if they want them and they want to spend the money. There are going to be always cards that are unachievable or unattainable, unattainable. due to the price. Not everyone yeah. has the same budget and bankroll for it, but they are obtainable. If you start doing short print runs of one ones or fives or tens, the cards just won't exist. Yeah. They just don't exist. They, yeah. they disappear. And, Burn, you've been around long enough to realize that cards just disappear. Yeah. So And look, it's, all, it's funny because all these conversations link back together with each other. The comment just before the one that drove this section was about older cards gaining or losing value. Yep. As, they're more high, as more high quality, newer cards come out, it's going to diminish the value of certain older cards. You know... It could be, like I just said with the Jack Steele Ruby, for example, it's cheaper right now than the marquee is. It's technically the same rarity, the same print quantity. Do the higher quality, newer cards bring down the value of lower quality, older cards? And again, we saw it happen with Prestige, basically, where so many nicer cards have come out to market sure. that it's temporarily and in the short and medium term driven down the price of previous ones. We'll continue to see that happen. And I think that's something that people who have been around for a while weren't used to happening. Yep. It never, it, it didn't used to happen because there was such a small amount of releases. With more releases and cards being more expensive from the get-go, the tr- there's a bigger choice. There's a bigger selection for choice. And more people are focusing on really particular stuff, whether higher quality physical attributes or design, signature cards, patch cards, whatever it is. So yep. cause and effect with everything. All right, so let's just claim up Gem before we move on to talking about Series 2. Um, select have a habit of doing releases in twos. So there's probably a fair assumption that we're going to see Gem next year again or sometime in the future. Yeah. What could they do better to improve Gem? Yeah. Um, so, uh, for, for me, there's a couple of, of major improvements that sure, shoot. that need to take place, and I think there's been a lot of chatter around it, and I'll probably get quite a few people, I would expect quite a few people agreeing. The price point for what you're getting versus the previous standard that has been set by Select is not right to me. 595 for what you're getting, I think the price is aspirational, but the delivery isn't right. At that price point, which is comparable to Supremacy, where you're getting at least a signature in every box, or if you're not getting that, you're getting a patch or whatever it is. And I think the biggest issue I have with this particular release is the signatures being one in every four boxes. And yes, I understand the concept that, well, if you wanted a signature in every box and you had to keep the prim run the same, well, then you're going to have four SIGs from every team. Yep. Yep. So there's a lot more signatures. More, might, more outlay for collectors. Yeah, more outlay, all, all that sort of stuff. But I think, yeah, I, I think the price point is a miss. So, if I, so on that, yeah. if Gem had been four ninety nine, does that re- absolve your problem? I, I think to, probably to a large extent because I think... $500 to me is a barrier. Yep. I think once you go over $500, there's a huge amount of scrutiny put on the product and people want to make sure that they're getting the value. I think the, the bigger problem here is a box of supremacy being $695 or $699, whatever it was, and how is this $100 less when, yes, the physical nature of the cards, it's a different product altogether, 
but people have become used to being guaranteed signatures or patches at that price point. So two things to that. First yeah. of all, if and when they do supremacy again, which I'm sure they will, do you think it's still going to be six ninety nine? No, I think the price probably goes up again. It went up already. It was five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars around. And, and then, again, so, that, that's extracted value. Like you're looking at. And have we just got so used to getting amazing ROI from the products? We've been very lucky. Absolutely. Optimum was an insane return. Absolutely. Supremacy, an insane return. Yeah, and, and here's the thing: at a five at five ninety five a box. Like, have we just been a bit? Spoiled, probably at five ninety five a box. Though people don't realise that you're still getting, you'll get a really good return on this. I think our numbers. What was our numbers spinning out here on a, an, a on a, a gem box? Yeah, something with an eight in front of it. Yeah, so like, you you're very. It's basically impossible to get less than five ninety five back per box. Are you going to get a thousand dollars back on every box? No, you're not. You're not going to get a thousand dollars back on every box. Will there be boxes that give you two k worth of cards? Sure, absolutely, sure. there will. But the, the reality but there's is, there's going to be a lot of boxes. The that extracted might get value of what's coming out of a box in terms of single cards and their value in the current market is still more than the RRP of the box. And even if it's you, just yeah, the, yeah even if you have a bad box and you get four or five hundred dollars back from it, yeah, like I mean, absolutely the nut low, yeah. We we need to as a community realize that you're not always going to get. In every single product, but the expectation, we've been groomed for that expectation. But Paul Richardson just made a good point. For 595 NBA, you can get a $5 SIG and a few parallels. Absolutely. And so, that's what, yeah. So people are aware of US product know totally. that you either get a car yeah. or you get five bucks. But we've back. been groomed. We've been yeah. groomed and we continue to be groomed. But by. is that recency bias? To an extent, but it's like this goes back to the whole thing about, you know, issues with cards stuff like that but let's let's most other card companies don't replace anything new products come out from select people voice their opinion and go very hard at it with the expectation that anything aside from replacement or anything aside from this problem being fixed is not acceptable sure whereas like with the international card companies the biggest ones in the world when there's a problem with a card, you'll get 50 comments of people going, ah, suck shit, nothing's gonna happen. Like, people don't even bother. Yeah. Like, they don't even bother. I think Select's thing about them replacing cards and doing stuff, although we demand it and we want it and we like to expect it, it's probably something that we don't, we, we take for granted. Richo again, we a lot of collectors don't realize how like, good we have it. It's insane. We take it for granted. But let's look at value for a second because I just want to touch on that. Let's wind back to say something like Footy Stars 2016. All right. So before the dusty um, Brownlow predictor was in there, you buy a box for $105. Yeah. There was one numbered insert card in it. You weren't getting your money back. You weren't even getting close. Yeah, so it used to be. So even as recently as the last legacy and dominance and all that yeah. sort of stuff, when you, you know... What every, about the dead boxes and dominance? I mean. Everything yeah. came in case form. So for every 12 boxes, there was a couple of dead boxes and stuff. But it was also like, out of a 12-box case, there was only a possibility that three of the boxes or four of the boxes would get a better extract, would have higher extracted value at the mm. time. Than, than what was in them, than, than what they cost at retail. Do you know what I mean? The times have changed. The yeah. times have changed both. The value of cards individually went up, but the card company now, in terms of select, also puts a lot more. They load their product up. Yeah. They want people to get the win. Yeah. People complain about the prices of boxes on the secondary market and the breakers are driving up the box prices. It's this, this, that, and the other. At the end of the day, if the cards that come out of them aren't worth anything, well, the boxes aren't worth anything either. It's a, it's a, everyone's involved. The collector is as responsible as the breaker is for the price of boxes at the end of the day. And again, like I think people just take it for granted how good we've actually got it. We're very lucky. And, and the value that, that we actually get and that you know these local card companies are, are so putting in to make sure that people get value out of it. Yeah, those damn breakers. That's you, James. And that's it. Uh, so, look, the one elephant in the room, obviously, and obviously it's already been fixed. Talk to me about the Phantom of the Opera half face cards on Gem. Half face cards. How did you fuck that up? So, basically, it was a, real, using it was a real stuff up. So, look, for those who don't know what that means, 
obviously there's some issue with some of the faces there's faces were basically looked to be cropped when foiling was done on cards or something in the production process as a result certain players of certain sets and it seems all of the cards for that player of that set have that issue with them select is now offering a replacement for it viewed in the same way as the diarcos misspelt bang card from footy stars or the max king influential it didn't have the influential printed on it yep initial uproar about it the uproar is what notifies these companies and in this instance the commentary and the discussion that was going on about it the inquiries being made by whether it was us or anyone else in the community so i i asked the question yeah um obviously a couple of days afterwards i and as everyone knows we have a relationship with select for the card authority i asked the question how does this happen yeah and in their qa process they didn't see it yeah what actually ha- they have to come back from the producer is that cards are printed on a big sheet yep. and the foiling gets stretched. There was a certain segment on every plate where the foil stretched too much, yep. which then obviously cut people's faces Makes off. Makes sense. And when they were doing QA, they didn't see that because yep. they didn't come across those cards. Yep. So it's, again, would we like all the cards to be perfect? Sure. Is there a couple of days where everyone's throwing their hands in the air going, yep. this is a disgrace. Yeah. But the fact that the they put their hand will up, show that they're they going to fix right it. They do the yep. right thing. And this is what gets me is you have people straight out the gate, day one, day two, oh, this is rubbish. These cards are trash. I'll sell this for half price because look at his face. Who's going to want it? Whereas a little bit of critical thinking based on what historically takes place, if you've got one of those cards, that's an error card. The error card can only be replaced. It's not additional. You don't get an additional card. You get a Correct. replacement card. So as a result of that, all it does is make that particular card a lot rarer. Mm. And what happens when something becomes rarer? It becomes more valuable because there's more demand for it. Well, master team master collectors yeah. need one of each. Yeah. So, but that's the whole thing. If you're a, if if you're that type of collector, you need one of each. So all of a sudden, instead of seventeen cards from the release. There's 18 cards to chase from the release, of which now, one of you know, if it's a ruby or if it's a green to 55, you're talking about if 30 or 40 percent get changed over, those cards are no longer numbered to 40 anymore. They're equivalent of number to 25, sort of yep. thing. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Like my strong advice, and I've been giving it privately to people coming past RGB and and the HQ recently, is if you have those cards. If you don't need the money now, I'd be holding those cards. Like, they're the ones that are going to go up. I can't remember who it was. Someone had two of the Jason Horn Francis rubies, right? Yeah. It's the rubies for sale. And they I thought they were pretty cheap. It was like 300 bucks each. I'm just thinking to myself, like, wowee. What's going to happen in a few months' time when they've all dried up and there's a misprint card as well? They're going to be super rare. Like, yep. what? what's... Why would you want to sell them now? Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't understand I that. Uh, Sam Ma mentioned about the indentations on the back of the cards. Look, that was certainly something we were watching very closely, and we've looked at lots of cards. There seem to be some cards that have some minor imperfections. Um, I think, again, with any of these issues, if you've got a card that's severely affected or a notable uh, imperfection, the best thing you can do is lodge a ticket with Select, and they deal with all these sorts of things on a case-by-case situation. Yeah. Um, I certainly have not seen a huge amount of cards that are like it. We obviously open a lot here on breaks. There are some with a minor imperfection, but I asked Adam a question today. I said, all the cards that you've been buying, have you been checking the backs? And he's like, hmm. Well, I'm not going to yeah, put words no, in your well, mouth. I haven't really been checking the backs. And to be honest with you, the dent thing is something that frustrated me from the outset. Mm. The but, fact, you f- but you forgot, though. Yeah, I've sort of forgotten about it. They haven't made a blanket statement about it. I would have thought if they were going to say something about it, the opportunity was there with the face issue. Yep. Um, and if it wasn't going to be there, I saw on socials, they got hit a little bit with commentary of, well, what about the dent thing? What about the dent thing? I would have thought they would have made a statement by now. They haven't made a statement. So now I view this as... It is what it is. You know, pa- damage out of the pack type of situation like you would with any release. Mm-hmm. If you've, you, if you've got an issue, take it up with Select. 
I suspect they review on a case by case basis. They do. Depending on how bad it is. Some people's stuff will get replaced, some won't get replaced. It depends how much of an issue it is for you. Um, All right. Again, I haven't looked properly at my cards. I'm probably, I, I don't even really care at this point. I'm, I've moved past it. And I'm the same time. I don't look at yeah. the backs. If it was, saying, if it was a if crater, it was a, oh, And that's course. the thing. Oh, don't get me wrong. If it's a jumper number, an 01, that's got a big issue with it, I'll, I would be contacting Select. Yep. To see what they could do. So... That is Jam. Obviously, we will continue to monitor the data and the market over that for next show, which will be in a couple of weeks. Um, we are ticking on the hour point, but I think it's very important that we touch on... Well, it was an exclusive that you broke, Janks, um, to the detriment of a whole heap of things. Yeah, exactly. Legacy, including the she's. The she's. Legacy 2023 looks like he's going to be the Series 2. We've seen Harry Sheasel's DPS photos. We've seen... Cooper, uh, whoever it is from Geelong, did Merle. a video. No, Mer not Merley. Um, Cooper, Cooper White? Cooper Phoenix? Uh, anyway, the Geelong guy that... Scoops? Scoops. Um, <laughs> looks like Legacy is coming back, which obviously poses a whole heap of questions of what will be in Legacy 2023. I'm excited to announce Adam Jackie has an exclusive. Uh, my exclusive <laughs> is... I got reamed because <laughs> Harry Sheezer got reamed. And contrary to anyone who's been trying to claim that, oh, they just got the, they got the photo off Select and they put it out. Oh, uh, no. You wish that I got that photo off Select. I got the photo off the Shees, and the Shees got in serious strife <laughs> for it from his manager. I was copying phone calls from the manager. Pretty hectic situation. Uh, I'm sorry, Harry. He watches the show. Big shout out to Harry. He did get reprimanded for it. Yep. It's super awkward. He was at my kid's <laughs> school on Wednesday. At lunchtime, doing like a footy clinic. What are the chances of player edition? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd be able to ask for a player edition. It's fair to say we're probably not really on speaking terms so much anymore. But, Phoenix um, Foster, thank you, Will. Yeah, but uh, yeah, big, big big shout out there to, to Harry. Um, obviously got that photo direct straight <laughs> off the back of his signing, which was pretty cool. Uh, to be able to confirm with that that Legacy was coming an absolute fan favourite if you go through our episodes everyone wants years, Legacy we've yep. talked about Legacy multiple times as being yep. prior to this boom of the last sort of two three years of this part of the cycle Legacy was really really one of those releases that everyone loved and it was the first one to really sell out after a couple of months where you could no longer fight you could go to Card Zone they didn't even have packets available yep um but really excited. And for Super people, excited. obviously, it's the yeah. Hall of Fame signature cards. And since the last release, there's only been one legend, which is Kevin Sheedy. So hopefully, we see a Kevin Sheedy card. Yeah. Uh, it was also the start of the next generation SIG. So could we be seeing a Danaher triple SIG? Silvani. Um, Dacos. Dacos. No doubt there will probably be some kind of uh, multi generational SIG. DPSs. It's going to be a ripper, Series 2. But um, look, we still think it's a little while off. Um, we haven't been briefed well, on the, it. The fact that... They're signing DPSs is positive. Yeah. That means it's coming at some yeah, point. Yeah, but like, I don't know, the fact that there's just literally not a word or acknowledgement at all coming out of Select makes me think it's still a little while off. Yep. Um, and I know I've certainly had the discussion with a few people in the community who, who won thought it was coming out in like a week's time but then on the flip side there's other people that are concerned about well, when it does it come out will yep. it be at a detrimental point in time because it's too late or there's a lot of people think that series two has to come out within season proper well this certainly isn't coming out in the next few weeks no within the, the home and away season so yeah um yeah and look andrew is asking rough price point on it no idea andrew i mean last year optimum was 330 a box 320, 330. It's going to be somewhere. You think that it's ball. gone up? Three years ago, what was it? Dominance was 240. Two, 240 a box. We're up to 330 now. Maybe 350. Yeah, I'd expect a minimum 350. I would think the price is going up. And to be honest with you, we've talked about it before with everything that's going on in this world. Not just forget about the trading card side, but the inflation side of the things. US dollar is cool. But just the cost of everything the cost of the freight, the cost of the production, the yep. cost of everything. You know, obviously, Team Coach went to three dollars fifty on their their series one on their Team Coach packets. Yep. You would expect something similar has to happen with Footy Stars. I and so. I would think that 
whilst the cost of doing business continues to go up, will the cost of all goods and services go up with it as well? Hopefully not too much, but yes. Yep. Um, Brownlow, who's going to win the Brownlow? Oh, I'm still on the Diarcos train. Okay. Yeah. Um, one little other bit too. Now, obviously we do have some Pokemon collectors um, that are in our community and there is a big event this weekend, TRA Con. Right. So Gabe from TRA Collective, who is a good friend of the show, um, I did ask for some notes so I could sound it. I have no idea about anything to do with Pokemon. No, so just wanted everyone to let me know. It's at the Melbourne Convention Centre, which is opposite uh, Crown, yep. the Exhibition Centre. Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, there's a heap of Pokemon artists, TCG. He's given me some names, to be honest. I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce it. Cosplay, 30 plus vendors. Um, you will get... Gorman will be there for sure. Gorman will definitely be there. Be Jeff, there. yeah, Jeff shared twenty nine dollars per day or fifty dollars for a weekend pass. You can buy them online at tra con dot com. We a presenting partner of this thing. I'm helping Gabe uh, out. Gabe's like a good it. man. Like so um, lucky we like you, Gabe. They've, look, they've, <laughs> it's really good. And as we've always worn our community hat, seeing people and businesses take chances and invest in the community. Absolutely. To go and roll out, and you know this from your other work, yeah. to go and hire the exhibition centre for two days on a weekend yeah, a is a substantial and a yeah, a investment. Risk, yeah. And for them to do that, um, get is around... Is running it? In? Are they running it? So TRA, which is obviously, they've got yeah. multiple stores in yeah. Australia. Um, it is going to be a big show. Yeah. If you're into Pokemon, you're into TCG, go and check it out. $29 per day, $50 for a weekend pass. You can buy at the door. Or you can get tickets at tra-con.com.au. Very good. Um, go and check it out. Gormy will be there. Gormy is in cosplay. He told me he's dressing up. Very nice. Um, I heard some sort of Pikachu outfit. Something like that. Good luck with that. Take photos. We want to see. I like it. I like it. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Obviously, it's been a big show. It's been a big couple of weeks for the AFL training card yep. community. Big month ahead. I heard someone mention before about Supremacy Rookie. No doubt we're probably going to see that this year as well. So a couple of big, big releases coming up. Jimmy Lawson, that is a very important question, and it's based on age. So AJ1 is him because he's a lot older than I am. I thought it was based on who has more hair. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for joining us for Card Authority, episode 47. Jenks, you've been sensational. Thank you, everyone. You know been sensational tonight? Yeah. Everyone involved. I the feel questions like the have been good. The questions, the commentary yep. has been... Absolutely top notch. It's probably up there with one of the best uh, yep, thank contributions you. everyone's made. So make sure you look after each other, be kind, get involved, get involved in your groups, your hobby stores, your break pages, all that kind of stuff. It's a fun time release. That's right. It's not a big set to collect with Jam. Um, it's an exciting time and we've got a big year ahead of us. Or no yelling at each other. Don't get upset with each other. If you need someone to yell at, you do it. Jax. Yeah, Jax. Always Jax. We're happy to cover it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening, and thank you for supporting we'll Card see Authority. You very soon. Ciao.